You may remember a real life headline of an aspiring author who was found guilty of murdering her husband back in 2018. The, to the story went from headline to lifetime, and we sat down with award-winning actors Sybil Shepherd and Steve Gutenberg, the Goot, to talk about the leading roles. Check it out. Hey, everybody. <laughs> We're so happy to have you two. Now, Steve, you've already made an appearance on our show without you even realizing it. Ooh, we bought a know. cameo for Tori. Let's just roll it so you, this might Ooh. trigger your memory. Okay, T-Bone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Tori, it's good, good to hear you know. I do remember doing that, and that was so cool, and you're so sweet. And thanks for, for giving me such love. You're, oh you're a doll. Well, I love the chemistry that we share. Just kidding. You share as Nancy <laughs> and Steve. You guys were strangers before the movie, and I wanted to know, Sybil, uh, uh, Steve, what were your first impressions of each other? I fell in love instantly. Yes, girl. Oh, I love with this man. Oh, my God. Then I had to kill him. Then I had to kill him. A little murder. A little murder yeah. between friends. Oh, man. <laughs> the first time we met was in the makeup room. I was nervous because I'm really a big fan of yours. When Sybil walks in, Sybil's a movie star. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and she's tall and beautiful. And Sybil walked into the makeup room. Uh, area and you know said hi to me and sat down and started getting to her work and moonlighting Glenn Gordon Karen yep. so I'm sitting there I'm like wow I'm working with Sybil <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> Sybil wants to be really great in every scene mm. yeah. she's asking why do I do this what's my motivation why would I create this why would I walk in and those are great questions and for another actor it ups your game so yeah, when you yeah. work with Sybil you you got to up your game a little bit, which is great because I want to be really good. It's an honor to, to ask two such accomplished actors. I've always wondered this question. Is there more pressure when you're playing a real person to be true to who they were and portray that on film? I had to learn who that person was. And a lot of the ways I learn, actors learn differently. And I'll just speak for myself, but I take 50% of who I am by the gray wig that they handmade mm. for my hair and the way, I, the way they did my makeup, mm -hmm. and then learning about her, reading about her, uh, seeing interviews of her, and then j trying to forget her, because I had to become her. If it's a true-to-life character, I kind of think it's a little bit easier because I have something to work off of. So I look at the videos, and I look at the voice, and I watch as much as I can, and read as much as I can about that person, and then, you know, basically, I think it's an imitation. A lot of the scenes are imagined in the writer's mind. You're trying to respect and honor that character, especially because Daniel Brophy, who I'm playing, was dead. Right. So right. I want to honor his memory and just do the best job I can as an actor. And, you know, frankly, I want to work. Yeah. I want yeah. to get another yeah. job after I, this. I love so, it. Yeah. <laughs> that we, you know, that's, that's the best answer. We all know Nancy Brophy, but you two have taken a deep dive more than anybody else. So do either of you have empathy for Nancy Brophy after learning everything you have? Our father was a violent alcoholic. Um, now, my father was a violent alcoholic, but my father was also a great man mm. and a wonderful man. He taught me to play football in the front yard, which was a very useful skill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, like I did when I left Memphis at 18, <laughs> and uh, I put the first interview for a film, and the guy said, uh, uh, can we get down on the floor and rehearse the love scenes? Mm. And I, I did not get down. Instead, I crossed my arms across my chest and said, I don't think so. Yes. yes. I wanted to know if there are any scenes oh. that actually uh, actually scared you to shoot. Was there any moments you were fearful of shooting? Uh, it was terrifying, uh, actually, to shoot this man. Um, but I couldn't <laughs> act that way. I, uh, my character had to not be terrified to shoot my my wonderful husband, <laughs> played by one of the most brilliant actors and sweetest guys I've ever known, and having to kill him. Aww. That was a tough <laughs> one. I had Absolutely. to be the character now. Steve, were you scared of Sybil? Well, Sybil, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, you know, I, I'm, I am frightened. I'm frightened of all women. That's, <laughs> Good you know, answer. And, that's a smart man. Sybil's a great actress, so the one scene where she's supposed to kill me, uh, and I've told you this, that I looked in her eyes when she's talking to me before she kills me, and it scared the crap out whoa. of me. She was a murderer. Wow. And Sybil. I went, whoa. 
that's like too much. Thank you both for taking the time. Sybil Shepard, Steve Gutenberg, thank you to I our viewers. Wait. The chemistry between those. Yeah. I know. And, and, How and Steve, to, yeah. Oh, Tori. How <laughs> to <laughs> has been. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Sybil Shepard and Steve Gutenberg. To our viewers, How to Murder Your Husband, the Nancy Brophy story, premieres Saturday, January 14th, and will stream next day only on Lifetime. We'll be right back. What a we pleasure, love guys. You guys. You guys are Thank amazing. you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, y'all. Ciao, ciao, Bella. Ciao. Congratulations, Congratulations both of you.